Well, welcome to this community snapshot, what to do with your dog in Athens. Linda Hobbit, our presenter, is a lifelong dog lover. And as you will see this afternoon, she's very skilled in training dogs. Most of all, she has taught me, and perhaps she'll teach you, how to exercise the dog and have fun for the dog, but it also is a lot of exercise and fun for the dog owner. She's prepared a very informative talk today to shed some light on these dog sports available right here in Athens. Today we have a live audience both at the Linden House Arts Center and online. Um, and I want to welcome all of you. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, anyway, uh, I consider myself a pretty much a lifelong student of dogs, which means that uh, in, in addition to just having them in my lives, I've, life, I've, I've enjoyed learning about their behavior, their biology, how to train them, their history, all the different breeds and things like that. Uh, I'm a member of the Oconee River Kennel Club, which is the local all-breed club, and it uh, offers a variety of things as well as being a resource to the community for information about, about dogs. Uh, they put on confirmation shows, tracking tests, birding events. Uh, they're going to do coursing next year. Every year there's a Responsible Dog Owners Day, which was last weekend. Uh, and they're getting uh, prepared to put on uh, agility trials in the future uh, and hope to ex continue to expand. Um, personally, I've participated in confirmation, obedience, agility, rally, tracking, and a bit of field work. Um, so the question is to start, what are dog sports? Uh, well, dogs and humans have worked together as partners for millennia. Uh, and they can do things that we, we can't do, we can do things that they can't do. Uh, so when we combine those things, we take our brains and their athleticism, their keen senses and instincts and work together, uh, we've been able to accomplish a wide variety of tasks that have contributed to the survival of both species. Um, we're still thinking up new jobs for dogs. But one of the more recent developments in the last century or so, as dogs have become not just work partners, but our companions have moved into our homes, uh, is many of these different jobs that dogs do have been turned into sports as well for people just to enjoy doing. Um, most film people have uh, an image of dog shows like Westminster on television or the movie uh, Best in Show. Uh, confirmation can be a lot of fun, but what I'm wanting to talk about today is primarily some of the uh, performance sports that are available in this area. I'll be talking mostly about ones that are under the auspices of the American Kennel Club, uh, although not all of them. And many of the sports are also uh, available under other licensing organizations as well, but the AKC is the most, uh, uh, most widely available. Most of the sports I'm talking about are available to all, all dogs, uh, and uh, uh, that includes both purebreds and, uh, and random breds. So, so the next question is, why, do you, why would you want to get involved in a dog sport? Well, first of, first of all, it's, just, it's fun for you, it's fun for your dog. It's great exercise, gets you out of the house doing things. Uh, it's a way to make friends with other people that enjoy dogs and enjoy other people who uh, are interested in doing things with their dogs. Uh, it can also improve communication between you and your dog and therefore usually improve their behavior as well. Um, there are multiple ways to participate in dog, sh uh, in dog sports. Most of these sports uh, you can earn a title by uh, achieving a certain level of skill and then demonstrating it in a ring or a field. Uh, you don't necessarily have to beat anyone to do that. And 
I'm not personally a very competitive person. I like to do well at things, but I, I don't particularly care about beating other people. So this is a really nice aspect of the sports to me because uh, it builds community because you don't have to compete against each other. You can all root for each other to succeed. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, for those people who enjoy competition, many of the sports have a competitive level where you earn titles by going out uh, and being the best and proving it in a competitive atmosphere. Uh, and then there are people who just enjoy the activity, who enjoy going to classes or getting out and training, being with a group of other people that enjoy the same thing, and they have no interest in going out and getting into the ring at all. And all of these are welcome in the, uh, in the area, and uh, there's room for all of these attitudes in dog sports, which is one of the things that I really enjoy about it. So. Um, we start the video? Yeah, like this, if right? you will. Okay, I'm going to start with obedience. Uh, <laughs> All right. Sound down. Okay. Um, obedience is the, uh, the oldest formal dog sport. It started in 1933 uh, to demonstrate the usefulness of the dog. Uh, it has, is made up of a variety of exercises that are derived from uh, good manners, uh, hunting, and other working uh, venues. Uh, the exercises are very standardized. Uh, in a certain sense, I compare it to dressage for horses because um, the highest level or the, the goal it requires a great deal of precision in the way these um, exercises are performed. Um, you know, when you go into the ring, you know what to expect, which is comforting for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, and uh, you you can have a lot of fun uh, just uh, doing that. And uh, and it's also very useful, particularly the lowest level, uh, are made up of behaviors that uh, are foundation really for almost any of the other sports because you, they all need a certain level of control. So if you want to fast forward it there. Okay. Um, agility is the fastest growing dog sport. Uh, it's been around mm, about oh, 15 to 20 years now. Uh, it's really develops teamwork and uh, it's basically inspired by uh, show jumping in horses and the obstacle courses they use for training police dogs. So. Uh, you're going over jumps, uh, teeter-totter through tunnels, uh, A-frame, weaving in and out through weave poles. Uh, and the, at each trial, the course is different. The uh, handler gets a chance to walk the course and memorize it before running, but the dog has never seen it before. Um, most dogs just really enjoy this, uh, and, and it's a lot of fun for the uh, handlers, too. Uh, there are multiple titling organizations, uh, and the requirements vary, but the basics are quite similar. Uh, at the different levels, uh, you learn all of the obstacles at the primary level, and as you advance through the titles, uh, they're just uh, the courses get longer and more complicated. Let's watch the video.
Uh, rally obedience is a, uh, a newer sport, uh, and it combines elements of uh, both obedience and agility, but it's a, it's a very accessible introduction to dog sports uh, because the behaviors are simple, uh, and uh, they're, most of them at, at the beginning level are done on leash. Uh, a, a lot of the, uh, the little movements uh, developed as just sort of practice things for a uh, sport of obedience. They were called doodling. Uh, so most of it's explained in the video, so let's go to the video. owner to the trainer. Okay. Um, the unique thing about tracking is that uh, 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 this is a sport in which really the dog is in charge. Uh, let's start the video on this one. Um, Dogs can do amazing things with their sense of smell. <laughs> when you're out doing tracking in, in a real life situation, you don't know where the track goes. You have to trust your dog. Uh, in training, we are teaching the dog to follow the particular scent that we want them to, that we identify for them. But we, we uh, don't know where it goes a lot of the times. We just have to follow the dog. So that's really... Uh, an exciting thing about it because you, you're use, watching the dog use their instincts in a very special way. Um, any dog can uh, learn to track. Uh, you can train on your own, but uh, at least one training buddy is very helpful. Uh, it's a very supportive community, and especially when you put on tests. Uh, it takes a lot of people to put on a tracking test and volunteering or just spectating at one is an excellent way to learn. And traditionally, there's always really good food. <laughs> so, let's skip forward here. To, to, um, at uh, the different uh, tracking titles, the uh, course gets more difficult, the length gets longer. <laughs>
a lot of the training you do for tracking is just simply by setting up situations where they learn how to work out scent puzzles, uh, and you just they keep getting more and more difficult as you go. So, funny. Flyball is really the only team dog sport, uh, although all of them are teams between the dog and the person. But uh, in flyball, it's a really race, re relay race. Uh, there are four dogs and handlers on each team, uh, and you go. They go out. Uh, over four jumps on, I think it's 55-foot course, uh, hit a, ball, a box at the end of the uh, course that will throw a tennis ball in the air. They grab the ball, come back over the jump, and then the next dog goes. Uh, and in a race, you have two teams running side by side. So it's very fast, <laughs> it's noisy, it's exciting. Uh, the world record for uh, it's 14.7 seconds for all four dogs. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, speed and participation in tournaments earns points towards titles. And uh, again, it's it's uh, a sport that a lot of people enjoy. Let's have a very short video. Quit before it was over. That's huh. good. I yeah. know why. That's okay. So, uh, go on to the next slide. Lure coursing is uh, simulated uh, open field coursing, like chasing rabbits and things like that. Uh, it involves a setup with a, a, a pulley system and usually just. Uh, some plastic bags to create a visual lure for the dogs. Um, it's mostly uh, for sight hounds, uh, the greyhound-like dogs, but there is a something called the coursing instinct test or aptitude test that's open to all dogs. And I've seen bulldogs and, <laughs> and everything doing it and having a great time. I mean, dogs love to chase things, and this is just a chance for them to do it, and it's fun to watch them. Let's see the video. Yeah, it is. I don't know why. So, uh, okay. um, herding is uh, something that is open to um, mostly the herding breeds. Uh, why don't you start the video on this?
one? No. Okay. Uh, dock diving is a, uh, uh, another more recent sport, and uh, basically the dog uh, runs down a deck, jumps into a, a tank of water uh, after usually a, um, a lure of some sort, and uh, there are several different types of uh, events based on either the height of the jump or the length of the jump, and uh, any dog can participate. Uh, there are div divisions based on the performance, not on the size of the dog or the, the level of performance that a dog has reached. Uh, and uh, it, this is another uh, fairly fast-growing sport. Uh, and uh, I know a number of people do it, and they and their dogs love it. <laughs> so. Just a little video here. You know, while it's loading, is there. this somewhere in, in Athens, this pool? Uh, no, but there actually is, uh, Potropolis is going to be building a pool. I've gone over some of the, the most common sports, but there are many others, some of which are available in this area, or if a person wants to get into them, they find some other people who want to do it and get started. Uh, there are disc dogs, which are the fris frisbee dogs. Um, uh, freestyle, which is dancing with your dog. I did, uh, this last year, uh, uh, Britain's Got Talent, which is, I think, the British version of America's Got Talent, was won by uh, a woman and a dog that uh, did freestyle dancing. Uh, nose work is a newer sport developed uh, on the behaviors that a dog does when they're like looking for drugs or bomb sniffing dogs uh, in which um, a dog is given a scent and then they have to locate it uh, in like a room or something like that. Um, Earth dog is uh, for smaller terriers and dachshunds where they go underground into tunnels uh, looking for rats. <laughs> uh, the rats are in a cages, so they're well protected. <laughs> uh, barn hunt is uh, a similar type of sport, but it's for larger dogs. Uh, water work uh, is based on the, uh, the, the jobs that Newfoundland and Portuguese water dogs did. Uh, there's a very active group of uh, people with Portuguese water dogs doing uh, uh, water work in the, the area. Uh, carting and backpacking uh, is something else. Weight pulling, uh, sledding and ski drawing, which you wouldn't think would be available uh, in this kind of climate, but people do it uh, using carts and uh, skates and things like that. Um, Schutzhund is one of a, of a several sports uh, that are based on the work of like police dogs. Uh, it involves obedience, tracking, and uh, protection work, uh, bite work. Uh, tray ball is uh, another herding sport, except instead of uh, uh, animals, they herd uh, like the big exercise balls <laughs> and maneuver a group of them through courses, things like that. Uh, there's amateur racing with uh, whippets and terriers. Um, I've not gone into uh, the hunting type sports, which of course is a major thing with dogs, but there are hunt tests and trials uh, for pointers and setters, retrievers, spaniels, uh, hounds and dachshunds, I think I, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, this isn't a sport, but search and rescue dogs are uh, very important in many different areas, and uh, it's a very worthwhile activity to get into. Uh, it requires a great deal of dedication to do it. Um, uh, these are just a few, <laughs> so there are more. Okay. There are a couple of other things that I wanted to, uh, to mention. Uh, one is the Canine Good Citizen Award, which is a simple test of basic manners uh, that, you, that you can earn a title 
four from uh, the uh, American Kennel Club. Uh, it involves uh, walking on leash, interacting with people, uh, interacting with other dogs, uh, simple uh, sit, stay, come command, and uh, accepting uh, being groomed, uh, plus the owner pledges to be a responsible owner. Uh, this is something that can be earned by, by any dog. Uh, another very uh, valuable activity is uh, therapy dogs. Uh, they visit hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living facilities. Uh, something that has developed in recent years is having children that are having trouble learning to read, read to dogs. Uh, and because the dogs are so non-judgmental, it seems to really help these kids. Um, if the therapy dogs can provide stress relief for victims and responders in disasters. Um, it can be done just on a casual basis, like, but it's a very good idea to do it under the auspices of something like um, Therapy Dogs International because They'll provide training and insurance. Uh, so that, that's a very worthwhile activity to get involved in if you have an appropriate dog or, or other animals uh, it, do it as well. Uh, and then uh, there's Sand Creek Dog Parks. Um, several parks in, in the Athens area have dog parks, but the unique thing about Sandy Creek is that they are private. Uh, they have three large uh, two-acre paddocks, and you can rent them for, for one dollar per dog per hour. Uh, so it's, uh, and they're set up very nicely with uh, a wooded area in the middle, so it's not just uh, one large space, but it's broken up so that you can walk around, and, and uh, it's a great thing to do with your dogs, or if you have friends with compatible dogs, go out and use the park. Are, uh, they're also good areas to do training off-leash. Uh, so I advise that. You can, they can also be reserved. So anyway, um, that's what I have to say as an introduction. Uh, there's also a document that I've made uh, that will be available online uh, that has uh, some information, contact information for all of these different sports in the area. So I'd say get out there and have some fun with your dog. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Oh, well, thank you. That was really interesting. <laughs> um, well, let's see if there. I have a question. Can I ask mine first? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, do all these dogs need to be trained when they're young, or could you have a rescue dog from a shelter who is a little older and train mm -hmm. that dog? Uh, many dogs in, in these sports are rescue dogs. Uh, you can start at any age. Interesting. Well, I'm going to um, look here on our Q&A and see if anybody asked a question. They didn't, but let's see. I see a hand up. I'm going to unmute Claire. And actually, Claire, I'm going to turn your camera on so we can see you. Uh, oh gosh! <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> oh yes, uh, I try it. You know, so see how it works. Thank you, Claire. Okay, I go. It tags along with your question, Madeline. Like, how old do you? How old will an old dog still learn a new trick? <clears throat> and you know, because Madeline, you know, my dog is 15. <laughs> And I thought, oh, he's not a good canine citizen. And how do you go about getting a dog to be a good canine citizen? Is there some place to take him and people help you? Uh, well, um, there are a couple of areas, uh, of the places in the area that offer classes, uh, particularly Patropolis, uh, and uh, offers classes that would prepare you for a canine good citizen award. Uh, uh, when I said that you could start at any age, uh, this is true, but you have to keep in mind the uh, physical uh, abilities of the dog at that time. It's like I wouldn't start agility with an old dog, but many people go out and start and do tracking with older dogs, uh, or uh, 
a therapy dog is is very good with older dogs because they've often calmed down a lot, um, and they're very quiet with uh, with patients and things like that. So, uh, whatever age your dog is, they're probably something that you can do with them. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to mention um, too that the Athens Clark County Library has a Read to Rover program. Yes, they do. Yeah, has your dog? Uh, been the uh, listener for that? Or? No, I haven't. My dogs are very bouncy. <laughs> Once they get a little older, maybe. <laughs> All right, we have a question from the audience. Uh, you know, I'm not hearing it. Is the microphone on? Oh. Oh, There's a lot of information on the internet that doesn't that is uh, out of date or not correct. And I had read that there was a dog park in Athens that has a public agility course. You know, just a small one. Yes. Is that true? Uh, this is true. Um, it's down in uh, the southeast uh, park, I think, which is uh, off of Lexington Road. Uh, it, it, there is some equipment there. It is not in the best shape anymore. But uh, if somebody wants, you know, if you want to do some training there, it is an, an option. Uh, and my second question is: I have a, a two-year-old Gisla, mm -hmm. and she's very athletic and very loving, and I think she has potential in tracking agility. I'd like her to be a therapy dog. How do I tell what a good fit for her is? Uh, well, you can try things out. Uh, you just sort of have to know your dog and maybe uh, talk to people who do the different sports. Uh, Visual of definitely agility, tracking, obedience, uh, pretty much any of these uh, uh, would be a real possibility for, for a Vizsla. Uh, young ones, yeah, yeah, and I understand that they are using them for therapy dogs. You know, I I think that um, if she gets to be about ten years older, <laughs> she may be up, up for that. Yeah, uh, any dog with a good temperament is uh, that can be calm in uh, around people and around other animals uh, can be a therapy dog. Uh, you know, they're so it'd be like. If I contact a trainer who works in this area, and maybe they meet my dog or I talk with them, they'll help me determine whether that's a good fit at this time in Molly's uh, life? Yeah. Uh, Therapy Dog International has um, tests uh, several times a year in the area, and they could put you in touch with people that are doing it and uh, that could give you some advice. Uh, any of the sorts of obedience training and stuff like that is a good background for a therapy dog. Okay. 